So we are on our way uh, to the office of Soldo right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to having a conversation with them. Let's see how their office is like and what they do. See you inside. Inviting us to your office, we are very happy to be here. Uh, I know of Soldo, and uh, it, it's it's really very interesting uh, to hear from the, about the business from you. So let's start with talking about your value to users and customers, and uh, if you could introduce yourself and your, your role in the business, that would be just wonderful. Uh, I'm the founder uh, I'm, and the CEO of, of this business. Uh, that that's my role in reality. I'm Mr. Wolf. I solve problems of any kind. Soldo is well. It's uh, trying to build the next uh, architecture and infrastructure for company pay and spend and it means uh, uh, something that will be able to handle uh, both at the banking level and the business support level all the processes within a company that deals with moving money around. Yep. Typically we work in the world of moving money from the company toward the outside. In order to make money you need to spend money and to spend money from within the company for goods, services and things you use in your day-to-day -day life it's not as simple as as it can uh, look. So we are trying to solve this end-to-end -end, uh, problem with the next generation platform, uh, basically empowering a company to, to optimize all the processes that deals with money. You, you, have, you have established a certain product market fit and how, how did you arrive at this point? Were there any iterations uh, before that? Uh, can you walk us through that? Or? Yeah, it, it was, uh, it's been a combination. Um, I don't think uh, uh, in a market like this, uh, the, a purely agile uh, and lean uh, model would work because we're not inventing something that had never been done before. In a way, we are, but within a context of something already existing. In Europe, every single company spends money. And they actually do that. They, they, they didn't wait for us to spend money and, 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 and exist, of course. So there are a number of existing processes. What we are radically changing is the way you look at that thing, because quite simply, you don't call something a problem until you know there is a solution for it. Mm. If you don't think there is a solution, you don't call something a problem, you call it a fact of life and you just go on with it. So, uh, so it was a sort of a combination of uh, believing something should exist, uh, not because anybody was asking for it, but because you knew that there was an underlying uh, uh, problem. And because you were building it, then that made uh, clear to the customer, made the customer aware of uh, well, given that there is a solution, this is a problem, and then you start iterating what is the right thing, what are the right priorities. All these bring different, uh, different uh, requirements and you have to iterate on, on each of them to really understand what they are and then ultimately to decide how you prioritize one of the... So there's a core central problem but it has many different axes if you will uh, and it is to iterate around those axes. Uh, exactly. Um, and your attempt at solving that, so I, I'd like to move on to that. Uh, a big part of that is uh, Soldo's journey as a company and the investment it has received in this journey of growth. So can you walk us through that? Yeah, we decided that, uh, uh, well, there are, there are two ways uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can address a problem. One is by doing the minimum and then getting sort of validation. Or starting from the hard side of it. Uh, so basically what we did was start from there on the um, foolish perhaps or just very strategically sound assumption that ultimately in this huge rethinking of an enormous industry like financial services we don't know the details of what's gonna end up in at the end but we know for sure the foundation was that and it was not going to change. So we started by building the foundation. We built the bank before building the application on top of the bank and ultimately getting the right uh, uh, product market or product segment fit for that. So we actually built it 
uh, from the bottom up. On the very first day, we like had 15 uh, engineers plus uh, well, we're around 15, 18 uh, in the company. Just, just to do the barest minimum we needed to do. So we started sort of a heavy uh, organization. Just from the uh, start, if you will. Yeah. But also taking, uh, it, it was just uh, recognizing the fact that, well, you have to do those things. Uh, and I've been there and in a way done that. I've already built a bank. Uh, yeah. When challenger banks uh, used to be the ones uh, with the PC and the modem, uh, so the first generation of challenger banks, not, not the current ones uh, with, uh, uh, with mobile, um, you know, you need to build a bank, you need to build a regulated entity to have the full stack for all the regulatory activity, all the processes, the full stack for technology. We didn't want to be basing our, uh, uh, our uh, architecture on somebody else's core activities or core technologies because we would not be in control. So we built it from the bottom up and that was the beginning. And, and of course, yeah, uh, on day one uh, we raised the first uh, uh, round. and. and as a seed round, it was four million, so quite sizable. To me, it's not big or not, uh, or, or beautiful or not, if it is a big number or not. It's just a question of uh, the industrial strategy. You want to build something, it's going to cost. Yeah. A startup building a network costs more than a startup building an app. Um, so we were building that. Then we started testing ideas on the market, because if you build a platform, the first thing you need to do is uh, uh, to make it run, to basically uh, run it on problems to, to make sure that, uh, uh, that it evolves. Software is like wine. It's never, well, you could argue that the Beaujolais is a good wine, uh, but the reality is good wine takes time. And, and software takes time to mature. So as soon as you build a, a, a platform, you need to put it in operation with a real problem, with real customers, uh, because only banging your head of 1,000 different problems and use yes. cases and special cases, you can mature your, your technology. So the next step we did was that. So thinking about the people side of growth for a moment, um, can you walk us through your journey of how the company grew? Uh, who were the first employees and uh, in time, uh, so what's the team size uh, currently and what are your future plans? And with that, maybe we can chat a bit about uh, the company culture you have here. I, really like to hear yep. about those, yeah. Uh, you, you're right, the growth is, uh, is a very different thing if it is outside or inside, and the two things are obviously uh, interconnected. Growth outside is sales and customers and all these things that you have to achieve, sustain and continue uh, to, to improve, but that can only be possible if you grow inside. And the growth inside is not just uh, is not just a function of the outside metrics. You don't grow a company only because you're growing sales. Because growing a company uh, uh, grows or increases the internal requirement just because of the size. When you're a small group, uh, a lot of things happen uh, uh, informally. Um, communication in a small group uh, just happen because we are in the same room, we, we breathe the same hair. Uh, you start having multiple locations, you must be much more deliberate and conscious. You o go over a certain size, communication stop existing until you actively create channels. And the right uh, rituals, I would say. Exactly, and all the things, otherwise you will divide up in tribes and silos and, and all things that, that then, at the end, in, hinder growth. Uh, your people will need uh, an informal environment, uh, uh, to start with, but as they go forward, they will need uh, a more formal, but not formal in the sense they come uh, structured. but structured and they need to recognize one thing. This is, I believe, a very important thing. Only by having structure you can really scale without having to reinvent every day the world because you want your energy to be focused on solving a problem that is new not solving a problem that is always the same. Uh, and so that means that uh, if you do something, you should do some, doing something, think about how you should do it, document how you are doing it, 
uh, in a repeatable way. So writing the playbook and writing what is the manual of your company and constantly updating it because uh, it needs to change. Creating the sort of organizational memory that is the real soul of the company it's very important and can only happen in a deliberate way. So you have to spend time and, and, and agree that we all have to do this. Otherwise, the next step will not be built on today's step, but we will be doing two steps forward and one back every time. Yeah. And that will hinder growth and will make it very, very tiring. On the other hand, it doesn't mean you're becoming a, a, a very boring organization with processes and the kind of thing. It's, it's just the proper way uh, to do it at a different scale, exactly as a, a, a 20 person companies managing in a different way than 50, 100 and then 500 and then uh, 1000. It, it will just implode on itself. It's just like saying if you're building a small cottage uh, or a small uh, villa, uh, you have a certain level of foundation. But if you think uh, you're going to put three, three uh, stories, stories of that, well, foundation must be different. And if that becomes uh, a 10 story thing, uh, you need different foundations, yes, but also probably an elevator and a number of things. You just can scale small company thinking into big company thinking. It's a different thing. Not better, not worse, it's just different. You want to scale, you want to build that thing and it must be embedded into your people and must be explained. It's not, again, it, 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 it's not bad, it's not good. Yeah. It, it's, it's the it's right the thing to do because otherwise we will not be able to express our potential uh, fully. And that's the real only goal of an organization. We bring together a lot of people. We want to express the potential of these people. So my name's Katie. I'm a sales development representative. So I do the pre-sales side of the enterprise sales team. So my day-to-day -day role looks like uh, looking at the leads that come in and qualifying them, um, having a chat with people on the phone about what their kind of needs are. And then um, if it looks like it's an opportunity, we pass it on. Uh, I'm Jules. I've been at Sordo for nearly two years now. Uh, and at the moment I am the head of startups and scale-ups, so I'm working on developing and executing a campaign specifically for that audience. Um, so it's going to be primarily based in London and then moving to other European tech hubs. When I first joined there was like a thousand accounts and now there's a hundred thousand, so it's grown a lot. Um, at the beginning it was like kind of scrappy, we've moved offices a lot since then. Uh, now it's a lot more structured and we've kind of developed, um, at the beginning it's kind of one commercial team and now there is the online side of the business and there's also the enterprise side of the business and we have Katie, there's kind of a direct sales team as well and we also, we originally started, quite unusually, we started in Italy and the UK so we launched in two countries at the same time um, but now we've expanded to like a lot of the rest of Europe. You know one thing that makes Soldo unique is that we've built the platforms from scratch so um, it, we own it but it means that at the moment we're still able to play around with what works and what, what doesn't and we take a lot of that feedback on from the customers we have at the moment so it's like feeding that through to the product team and making sure that this is a product that works for all businesses and has, a, has the ability to work for the sole trader and the 40,000 multinational. I think I always say that it's really exciting I mean the people are so fun I've never worked somewhere where I just feel like I really work with people that are just kind of on my level they're really good fun all the time but also people that really believe in what we're doing um, so I really believe in the product and I think that's why I you know chose to come here and it's exciting to be at this period of growth as well I always say that you know it's you might not have heard of us now but you definitely will know uh, but before before we finalize uh, this brings me to my um, next and final question, uh, you talked about uh, looking at the future and you mentioned one of the milestones which was doubling in size from 100 to 200 which you are in the process of. Uh, what other key milestones are ahead uh, for Solden in the future? Well, let's say that doubling the size of the organization is not a milestone per se, it's not a goal, it's just a means to an end. Uh, what we are aiming to do is uh, is to, uh, well, if you were to look at the most visible thing as sales, uh, as a KPI of uh, sort of, I, I measure, I, I say that's a measure of uh, the impact of what we're doing in the market. Uh, we, we believe we will be growing uh, uh, a multiple, two, three, four X uh, 
uh, every year uh, because we have a, an incredible opportunity. We are uh, in a market, uh, we, we are looking at an opportunity that is so big uh, to be almost unmeasurable. So the only, only limit to the result we will achieve, and I'm saying on record, it's going to be our capability uh, to achieve that. So there is no external uh, limitation. There would be no excuse. The only real uh, inherent limit to what we can achieve is the organization uh, itself. So that, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, we can grow a lot because uh, we are uh, facing an enormous market. Uh, what we can solve exists in every single company, any size in the whole of Europe. So that's, that's really huge. It's our capability to define the right product, implement it, and, pro and bring it to the market uh, the, real, uh, the real challenge. And that's why building the company is as much a, a challenge as building the product and the go-to-market. Because only by creating the right foundation inside, you will yeah. be able to face these uh, challenges outside. Kind of future-proofing the business and focusing uh, on the short term uh, as well while doing that. Um, Overall, this has been uh, one of the best conversations we've had, uh, I honestly think, because you've conceptualized the problems in the market, not just for this business, uh, but for, for, for this uh, domain in this, in this industry in, in very clear and uh, succinct ways. So thank you for that. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have this chat with you uh, and we're happy to be here. Ah, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.